This is the third video in a series about amortized cost analysis. The first two videos were just setting the scene. In the first video, we talked about the hare and the tortoise and why it's useful to be able to reason about the aggregate cost of a sequence of operations. In the second video, we talked about the idea of amortization, an accounting trick that makes it easier to reason about aggregate costs. This is the third video in the series, and we're going to do three things. We'll give a proper definition of amortized costs. Then we'll explain how they're used. In other words, if someone tells you, my data structure's operations have amortized cost X, then what do you do with that information? And finally, we'll discuss how to come up with amortized costs in the first place. Let's jump straight into a definition. Pause the video, read this definition, and press play when you're ready. Let's talk through this definition in terms of the min list data structure from the last video. That data structure supports the operations append and min, and we imagine running a sequence of four operations, three appends followed by one call to min, and the top diagram shows the true cost of each of those operations. Call them C1 up to C4. The bottom diagram shows a different set of costs, call them C1 prime up to C4 prime, which we got in this case by taking the C4 cost and splitting it among the first three operations. It doesn't matter how we came up with these C1 prime up to C4 prime costs that we invented for now. All that matters is that there are no late payments in the sense that C1 is less than or equal to C1 prime, C1 plus C2 is less than or equal to C1 prime plus C2 prime, and so on. The way to remember this is that for any sequence of operations, the aggregate true cost of the sequence of operations must be less than or equal to the aggregate amortized cost of those operations. In other words, the amortized costs give us an upper bound on aggregate costs. This inequality is called the fundamental inequality of amortized analysis, and it's the thing to remember to make sense of everything we're going to do next. Now, there's one sneaky little phrase here, applied to an initially empty data structure. When we're doing amortized analysis, we do have to be quite careful about the statements we're making. This is one of those little bits of useful pedantry that sneaks in, and I'm going to come back to it later. Okay, so that's the abstract definition of amortized cost. Let's look at how we use the definition in practice. Concretely, suppose someone tells you this data structure supports push at amortized cost big O of one and pop min at amortized cost big O of log n. Here's what they mean. They're making a claim about aggregate costs. They're saying that for any sequence of operations, we can get an upper bound on the aggregate cost of the sequence by adding up the amortized per operation costs. This is just restating the fundamental inequality. And then lastly, a little bit of simple algebra to tidy up the expression. At this point, please pause the video, have a careful read and copy it out with pen and paper because it's really important to get used to how we express ourselves when we're talking about amortized cost. Now, this is a big O statement. In other words, it's an asymptotic statement, and it's good to be absolutely precise about what asymptotics we're talking about. This is what it means. Again, please pause the video, copy this out, and play when you're ready. The key phrase in all of this is for any sequence. What we've written is a big O statement, which means that we're talking about an upper bound that applies to sufficiently large n, but the upper bound has to apply to any m1 and m2. It has to apply if m1 and m2 are constants. It has to apply if m1 and m2 are functions of n. <clears throat> it might be m1 is log n, m2 is n squared. It could be anything at all. 
I just want to be absolutely explicit about this here because even though we don't usually have to think about this precise definition, usually when you have to remember the catchphrase, aggregate true cost is less than or equal to am aggregate amortized cost. Most people, including me, do from time to time get tangled up when we're applying the idea, especially when it comes to looking for tight bounds. And it's good to know where to go back to to find a precise definition so that we can resolve any confusions. OK, so that's how we use amortized costs once someone else has found them for us. Next question, how on earth do we invent amortized costs in the first place? I'm going to show you two ways to invent them. The first in this video is manual, direct from the definition. And it's nice to see it once, but it's too involved to use it in practice. The next way that we'll see in the next video is indirect, but much easier to use. Let's work through a practical example. Pause the video, have a read of this example, then press play. Let's just sketch out the data structure we're talking about here. We're talking about a dynamic array and we're appending elements one by one. If we start off with an empty array size one and append an item, we get this and the cost of doing so is one because all we did is write in that item. Next item we want to append, we first have to double the array. The cost of doubling from size one to size two is kappa and the cost of writing in the new item then is one. So the total cost of this append is one plus kappa. And the next item also requires a doubling before we write in the item and the total cost is one plus two kappa and so on. OK, so that's the data structure that this question is talking about. Now let's try and answer the question. It asks us to find the amortized cost. And what is an amortized cost? It's a cost that satisfies the fundamental inequality. For any sequence of operations on an initially empty data structure, the aggregate true cost must be less than or equal to aggregate amortized cost. So the question is asking us to invent amortized costs and to calculate the aggregate true cost of an arbitrary sequence, let's say a sequence of n appends, and compare it to the sum of n of our amortized cost and show that the fundamental inequality is satisfied. So let's just dive in. Let's just work out the aggregate cost of n appends, starting from empty. I'm not going to go through this in painstaking detail. I'm just going to write out the answer here. When we do the n appends, we have to write in n values into the array. We also have to do a whole load of doubling and copying along the way. When we go through it carefully and count up exactly how many times the array gets doubled, this is the total cost we end up with. And if you remember secondary school maths about the sum of a geometric series, we get this as our final answer. This equation kind of tells us what our amortized costs should be. The aggregate true cost grows linearly in n. It's n times 2 kappa plus 1. So let's just describe amortized cost 2 kappa plus 1 to each of the appends. That means that the aggregate amortized cost is just n times 2 kappa plus 1. And so clearly the fundamental inequality is satisfied for a sequence of any length. Therefore, these are legitimate amortized costs. OK, well, this is a very hands on way to come up with amortized cost. It's far too involved to actually use this approach in practice. It's far too fiddly to have to work through the details of exactly what the aggregate cost for a sequence of operations is. And the next video will show an easier and more intuitive way to invent amortized costs. But I did want to go through this example and go through an explicit calculation because I want to show that finding amortized costs isn't just some mysterious black box where we turn the handle and go through a set of mystery steps. It's something that stems directly from the fundamental inequality. To wrap up this video, I want to come back to the sneaky little clause in the definition and something that often trips people up. Let's suppose our dynamically sized array is full and let's say it has size n and then we call append just once. This single call to append is certainly a sequence, a sequence of length one. So doesn't the fundamental inequality tell us 
aggregate true cost should be less than or equal to aggregate amortized cost? Well, in this case, the true cost is 1 plus kappa n, and the amortized cost is 2 kappa plus 1. So the fundamental inequality definitely doesn't hold. Basically, there's no way to come up with a useful definition of amortized costs that will apply to any data structure in any state. If we tried to define costs so that the fundamental inequality applies to any state, then most of the time it won't give us tight bounds, so it'll be useless. And so the compromise we make is we declare, I want the fundamental inequality to apply to any sequence of operations starting from an empty data structure. That's the clause that snuck into our definition of amortized costs, and now we see why we needed it.